In this video, I'm going to be talking about the three different right hand rules. The first one is the one that's going to be the most versatile in answering most of the questions, which is the first right hand rule over here. And basically you have your thumb up, your pointer finger out. So it's basically making an L shape and then your middle finger is pointed out 90 degrees from your pointer finger. Now, the reason why that is the right hand rule that I prefer, as opposed to the one where you just have your thumb out and your palm flat is because it locks in those two 90 degree angles pretty well so that you make sure those are aligned with the B magnetic field, the I, which is the current or the velocity of the charged particle or the magnetic force. The second and third right hand rules are both pretty similar. They're just opposites of one another. So if you have a magnetic field that's wrapping around in a circle. You let your fingers curl around in a circle like this as the hand shows, and then the thumb is pointing in the direction of the current. And then vice versa, if you have a current that wraps around in a circular type motion, something like a solenoid or just a coil of copper wires with a current flowing through, then whichever way your fingers curl, with the current, your thumb is going to be in the direction of the magnetic field. So it kind of goes either way. So let's take a look at a few different unique scenarios where we'll apply all these different right hand rules to figure out things such as current, force and magnetic field. So the first one over here, we are going to use our first right hand rule, which is this one over here. So we're going to lock our fingers in place and it doesn't matter which one you start with. And if you don't remember or haven't been told, the X means in, as in into the screen, and then the dots mean out, straight out of the screen. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start out with my middle finger pointing straight into the screen. And then I basically have my palm facing the screen and then my other fingers are pointed out 90 degrees. And if I twist my arm so that my thumb is facing down with the force, then my pointer finger is pointing to the left. So my answer is that the current is pointing to the left. Okay, so once again, if I lock my finger in the right hand rule position, as the first one is, what I did was um, I took my middle finger and pointed it into the screen, twisted my hand so my thumb is pointing towards the bottom of the screen, and then my pointer finger is pointing to the left. Okay, and remember it's the right hand rule, so you wanna make sure that you put your pencil or pen down if you're right-handed and then use your right hand. If you're lefty, then your right hand is already free. So then with our second case over here, we're using our right hand rule where we wrap our fingertips around. So if we use our right hand and we let our fingers curl around in this direction naturally with our right hand, then our thumb is gonna be pointing straight out of the page. So the dot is going to be out. So the as our fingers curl around counterclockwise, our thumb is pointing straight out of the screen. So therefore, our magnetic field is going outwards. All right, let's slide down here. And we have some current carrying wires. Now these scenarios can get a little bit complicated. We're going to use this right hand rule over here, the second one. And our magnetic field is going to be in the direction that our fingers curl and our thumb is going to be in the direction of the current. So for this one, we have two currents that are going upwards. So if I point my thumb up towards the top of the screen, then my fingers will be curling into the screen here and out of the screen here. Okay, so once again, if I have my thumb pointing upwards, my fingers curl into the screen on this side of the wire and then out of the screen on this side of the wire. Now for the red wire, the same sort of thing happens as well. If I curl my fingers around the wire, then it's gonna go inward on the right side of the wire, and it's gonna go outwards out of the screen on the left side of the wire. So here's the part that is a little bit tricky. So as I'm analyzing the red wire, I'm gonna use this right hand rule right here, okay, to see what happens to these current carrying wires. Okay, so I'm gonna set my finger in the right hand rule and I'm gonna take my pointer finger and I'm gonna have it going up on the page. 
And because the red wire has a magnetic field that's outward from the blue wire, I'm going to make sure that my middle finger is pointing out of the screen. Okay, so my middle finger is out of the screen. My pointer finger is pointing straight up. And then my thumb is pointing to the right. So this wire is going to get pushed towards the right. Now for our blue wire, it feels the magnetic field from the red one, and it gives it this inward magnetic field. So my middle finger is going to go into the screen. And then my pointer finger is going to go up the screen with the current. And then my thumb is facing to the left. Okay, so when two current carrying wires are next to one another, they're going to attract. They have forces that push inwards towards each other. Okay, so to sum things up, the blue wire produces a magnetic field that, connect, that um, affects the red wire. And the red wire produces a magnetic field that affects the blue wire. And then finally, when you use this right-hand rule on each one of the wires, then both of them are going to get pushed inwards. All right, so let's go ahead and do that same type of problem, but for wires that are going in opposite directions. So if I use this right hand rule, then I have my thumb pointing down towards the bottom of the screen, and then my hand curls into the screen here and out of the screen here. And then for my red wire, same thing as this one over here, which was if my thumb goes up, it curls into the screen over here and then out of the screen here. Okay, so just like the last one, what we're gonna do is we'll take a look at the red wire first and then go back into this right hand rule. I'm gonna make sure my pointer finger is pointing straight up on the screen and I'm gonna make sure my middle finger is pointing into the screen. Okay, so my pointer finger is pointing straight up with the current and then my middle finger is going into the screen because it's feeling those blue X's which are into the screen and my thumb is pointing to the left. Okay, for this one, remember the blue wire feels the magnetic field from the red one. So it feels these red X's which are into the screen. So my middle finger is going to be into the screen. And then my pointer finger is me pointing down on the screen. So I'm twisting it in kind of a weird formation because I'm basically pointing straight at myself. So I'm kind of like twisting my elbow outwards and I'm pointing towards myself and my middle finger is going into the screen. And then that forces my thumb to go to the right. Okay. Like I said, that's a little bit of an awkward position because you're twisting your pointer finger to point at yourself. And my middle finger is going into the screen, which forces my thumb to be pointing to the right. So when we have two current carrying wires that are going in opposite directions, they are going to repel each other. Their forces are going to be away from one another. All right. So for our last two scenarios, which are pretty different, we have a motor that's in a magnetic field. So what's happening with the motor is you want to see which way it's being rotated. So the current is going around clockwise from our view here, and we have a magnetic field going from left to right. So if we have to, we basically have to take a look at each part of the wire to see what happens. I would say it's pretty, the best way is to just analyze this portion over here and then analyze this portion over here. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my first right hand rule, this one over here, and then I'm going to get my pointer finger pointing straight up on the screen because I'm analyzing this part over here. So my pointer finger is pointing straight up on the screen and I make sure my middle finger is pointing towards the right. Okay, so I have to twist my wrist a little bit so that I'm pointing straight up the screen with my pointer finger and my middle finger is going to the right. And then my thumb is getting pushed into the page. Okay, so my 
thumb is pushing it into the page. Okay, when I go to this part of my um, current carrying wire over here, I'm going to point my pointer finger towards myself. And this is the same semi-awkward semi position that I had before where I'm basically pointing at myself and my middle finger is pointing to the right and my thumb is pointing out of the screen. Okay, now with that being said, it's getting pushed in here and then out here. So if you take the aerial view, basically if you were looking down at this right here, it's gonna make this motor turn cl clockwise. Okay, so it's getting pushed in here and then out here, and this isn't gonna be a great drawing, but this that means that it's rotating this way. Okay, so if you're looking at it from the aerial view from the top here, it would be rotating like this clockwise because it's getting pushed in on this side and out on this side. And those are basically working together to give it that clockwise rotation from the aerial view. Now, taking a look at the very last one, um, the very last one, we are gonna use our right hand rule over here, which is the most popular one. And we're gonna take our middle finger, point it out of the page. And then we are going to turn our pointer finger towards the right. And that would make our thumb face downward. Okay, now what will happen in this case, if you're talking about a charged particle moving through a magnetic field like this, it has a force going downwards and this velocity going towards the right. So it's gonna cause it to curve in a circular type motion. So in cases like this, you may be asked to do something that has you analyze the centripetal force. The centripetal force is mv squared over r. And if you are looking for the actual magnetic force, which is the centripetal force, the center seeking force that causes it to curve and go around in a circle, then you would use QV cross B. Okay, so it depends on the scenario that you're given, um, but that would be the setup. You have, have MV squared over R, which is your centripetal force equal to QV cross B. So I hope that was helpful in helping you understand and apply three right-hand rules in a bunch of different scenarios. Thank you for watching and listening.